Hi guys, uh, this is lesson number three um, for engineering students from University of West of England, uh, level one. Uh, today I want to open up a new topic called pictorial presentation. Until this point we have talked about uh, the British standard which governs the um, the way drawings are produced. Uh, we, we talked about the what, what goes what goes on engine drawing, uh, including notation, what goes in the title block. We talked about different line types. Uh, and what do they mean on paper? We have you guys have a fairly good practice of uh, drawing uh, the orthographic projections. After that, we talked about different um, projection system. So that we talked about first and the third angle system. Um, I'm hoping you guys are fairly fairly uh, confident in in identifying projection system. Um, and today, I want to talk about pictorial representation, which is uh, this goes in addition to the orthographic views on on engineering drawing. Uh, this is uh, this is meant to help the viewer with uh, to 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 understand the final geometry, um, and obviously you know the, the, these are going to be uh, this is uh, you know some sort of three D drawing. So it's it's got you know this is how objects appear in real life, and I'm going to summarize about three of them. Um, and they are perspective views, oblique projection, and isometric projection. Um, let's go for the first one, which is the perspective view. I think this is generally most common in um, in construction industry, as you can see, um, this uh, you know that it's based on the fact that objects that are closer to you appears bigger uh, compared to the objects away from you. And um, uh, if you're looking at, let's just say, this edge here on this house, so that is a certain length, and obviously that edge is constant, as you can see. Uh, that looks like a bit of a porch coming out. So that height is exactly the same as this height here and this height here. But um, this is how we perceive um, a real ob objects in real life. And uh, we want to use this. Um, uh, we want to capitalize on this this phenomenon. As as we can see, objects we are going far away, far further away, get get smaller. Um, and there is a set technique of uh, of uh, producing uh, perspective views. We basically start with, as you can see, the red line here. We start with a a horizon. So it's basically just a horizontal line which marks the horizon, and this is where the uh, the, the 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 edges are supposed to meet. Um, when and they are supposed to meet in the vanishing points, basically. So the furthest away these vanishing points are, the the better your drawing looks. It it looks more realistic. Um, uh, let's just call that VP one and VP two. Uh, obviously, the first step is going to be drawing the edge which is closest to you. So, uh, let's just say I want to draw that um, box here with length L, and I'm going to draw the precise length over here. Uh, well, that's sitting at the midpoint, just below the horizon, um, as you can see. Uh, next up, I want to connect the vertices of this line. So, I want to connect from this vertex up to the vanishing point. And repeat the process from here over to there and I want to um, connect this vertex to VP2 and VP1 and this technique is based on uh, connecting all the possible vertices with the vanishing point and that's uh, that's how we end up with uh, with the perspective view next up I'm gonna plot the length of the box here and that gives me uh, kind of a zone that gives me that 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 face um, and once again, I'm going to repeat connecting these vertices with these vanishing points. So I'm going to start from that point, going up to VP2, from this point over to VP1. And that in the end gives me um, some sort of a framework for the box. So as I said earlier, the further these VP1 and VP2 are, the more realistic your object looks um, for the final step what I can do is I can go over these edges all of these visible edges uh, using a continuous thick line and make them more prominent make them more uh, visible so that was your perspective view for you guys next one is oblique view somewhat similar to perspective uh, uh, we we are not going to morph the uh, the scale in both the axes uh, let's just say that um, uh, objects appear obviously bigger on and on this side and as they're going away um, we are going to reduce the scale by half um, so whatever ch scale we choose on this face as we are going in we're going to reduce the scale by half that side obviously uh, it's about 45 degrees to the front face and that's at 90 degrees as you can see uh, so there was oblique views for you guys 
again not very common in engineering uh, let's just very quickly move on to isometric views uh, this is most popular in engineering uh, very well applied to a uh, smaller object <clears throat> um, it's very common in most of the CAD packages and if you were to pick any engine drawing you would chances are uh, 8 out of 10 times you would see an isometric drawing provided along with the orthographic views and it's 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 kind of simple to understand um so if you were to imagine um, the general trial of x y z in um, you know the normal x y and z axis and generally there are about 90 degree apart from each other so there is always a 90 degree angle between x y y z and z x um these isometric views are based on let's just say some sort of a distorted um, x y z system so it's got it, it has got the normal y or let's just call it a z axis so as it's going straight up that's the z axis but these two isometric axes um, they are not at 90 degrees in fact they are at 30 degrees to the horizontal so if i were to draw a horizontal line here this angle here it's 30 degrees and this isometric axis that's making 30 degrees with the horizontal on on this side so instead of uh, drawing objects on a 90 90 90 um, coordinate system uh, we go for um, this uh, these isometric axis <clears throat> as you can see um, the scale uh, remains the same so the length as you can see the edge here is exactly the same as edge here so we are not going to reduce this, the scale but we are only going to morph the space we're going to draw uh, the edges on just to give you a quick example of um, an object drawn in isometric uh, uh, view uh, as you can see uh, the edges which are um, along or let's just say uh, the vertical edges are clearly shown as as vertical edge here so that's a vertical edge that's at 90 degree that's 90 degree but all of these are vertical edges but the edges which are non vertical so let's just say they are going from this vertex outwards uh, they are drawn at a 30 degree angle so uh, that angle there it's about 30 degrees <clears throat> what's peculiar about this is or you know the my, my favorite technique of drawing isometric view is I, I would tend to start with the nearest uh, point so for this object I would start drawing let's just say two continuous thin lines going away at infinity then I would plot this distance here which appears to be about two units and I would plot this distance which appears to be two units here I would draw a continuous thick line going straight up marking that edge um, and is there a number for this yet uh, maybe there is we can deduce uh, using these numbers here um, so if if that is 1.5 uh, this is one so I, I reckon that's about a half unit left there so I'll travel up and so on so forth so I'll carry on building these edges every time I need to go horizontal left or right I'll go 30 degrees instead of going at 90 degrees um, and what, what works best for this technique is sorting um, one face out after another so you, you may choose to draw the front view uh, all of that distorted on the 30 degree scale and then you may want to complement that with the top view and the side view so on and so forth uh, what's peculiar about this is the way circles are drawn as you can see circles aren't circular anymore because if you are looking at them uh, let's just say there is a camera in space and you're looking down at them at about 30 degree angle uh, the circles will appear slightly distorted as you can see with this circle here and all the zeros to be honest with you. Um, they are a good representation of how things will appear in isometric um, if you're drawing a circle by hand there uh, there are a couple of methods of doing that one is ordinate method and one is another one is instrument method um, <clears throat> the ordinate one it's pretty uh, well it's uh, it's it's very manual um, if I can just talk you through the process and maybe in the end you want to choose uh, one or the other um, so basically let's just say that's the front view of the circle you want to create the isometric view of um, obviously we have the center lines here the vertical axis horizontal axis the first step is to box the circle as you can see it's been boxed and then segment that box uh, into equal number so let's just say if that was about 20 millimeter I would break it down into about 10 segments of 2 millimeters each and what that gives me 
uh, well, let, let's just say, I, um, well, as I always say, it's easy to draw the box instead of circle. So we're going to create a box around the circle and we're going to transform that box on an isometric scale here. As you can see, that is the length, which is the same length as this. And all of these sides, which are going horizontal here, they are going on isometric axis here. Uh, that's the same distance as this axis here. Um, we can draw all the segments. Next up is we're going to measure the intersection or maybe this distance here. So from the center, center point over to, let's just say, wherever that intersects. I want to measure that using a compass and I want to plot that distance from this point onwards over here. And it just happens that it's the same distance on this side. I want to repeat the process for these points. So starting from this intersection here up to this. I'm going to measure that and I'm going to plot it along this segment. And what that gives us is it gives us a set of these intersection points. Uh, what you need to draw, what you need to do after this uh, is using a continuous thin line to start with, uh, join all of those intersections. That kind of gives you a, a, a sort of a locus of all of those intersections and that that in a sense is is in um, a, a circle in isometric view. So if you, if you happen to have a circle on this face, so the left hand side face you will have to draw a box like this or if you had a circle on let's just say this side here you'll have to draw circle facing so it, the circle will have a uh, major axis this way and minor axis this way as you can see in this ellipse <clears throat> so as i already said this is this is uh, there is a fair bit of labor in, involved into this technique it tends to be well it's so uh, it's it's kind of an acquired skill um, the next one seems to be my favorite um, instrument method um, and the way it works is uh, well, same as earlier you, uh, you you stick the circle in the box so let's just say a a b c d was the box around the circle these lengths are exactly the same as the diameter of the circle um, and that box has been transformed onto isometric uh, axis so a d is not horizontal anymore. it's at 30 degrees to the horizontal and c d is the vertical axis um, so I think we are fine up to this point. What we need to do is draw a, uh, a bisector or you need to connect vertex B with vertex D. So basically, uh, as it happens, that, that, that happens to be the angle bisector of this, this corner here, same as here. So you're going to join those two. That will give us two similar triangles. Next up, from point A or vertex A, we need to draw a projector going over to the midpoint of BC let's just call it B dash and repeat the process for A till midpoint of the segment DC and let's just call that a D dash um, so well we're looking at a structure like this so these are the projectors we, we these are the thin lines we produce I repeat the process from vertex C so we basically start from the obtuse angle going to the opposite side uh, and uh, we are um, drawing the midpoint, uh, we're joining the midpoint from the from this vertex here. So that's again, uh, let, we can call that uh, B double dash and that's D double dash. Next up, this is very easy now, uh, using a compass and using this distance as the radius and F as your center point. If you draw an arc, that's going to meet b dash and b double dash and that gives us a really smooth curve over there repeat the process from point e so this is the center point that has the radius draw this arc join in d dash and d double dash we have a smooth curve next up repeat the process so from a as the center point and a b dash as the radius if you draw a smooth arc you will get an ellipse. Basically, you will have to repeat the process um, from point C once again to get this smooth. So, as I said, this this tends to be um, a much easier uh, technique of uh, drawing uh, circles in isometric views. Um, and I, I personally prefer this technique over the in instrument um, over the um, <clears throat> the other method, uh, the ordinate method. I beg your pardon. Right, so if you are in UA, uh, you would have access to Blackboard and I have uploaded my presentation on Blackboard. 
uh, at the end of this presentation there are a couple of exercises I want you guys to go through um, if you want to you can print this off and uh, you can you can start sketching and um, perhaps maybe later on um, or bring bring the printouts over to you or I'll, I'll make an announcement in that effect where to collect the printouts from uh, if I get, get a chance to print these out for you so basically what you're looking for uh, is you're gonna complete this this drawing um, what you're looking at here you, ha you have the front view of an object a top view of an object a side view of an object um, uh, this is obviously a same object looking at it from different orientation and I want you guys to complete the isometric view um, so that you're looking at a, sort of a 3d pictorial view of the same object here uh, so you will have to repeat the exercise for uh, this object here once again front top and right hand side view of an object and you will have to complete the line work for uh, for this 3d view or the isometric view there is another one on the next slide which I uh, hope you guys um, find on blackboard uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is again similar scenario. Uh, wh what's different in this one is you, you're provided with a left hand side view instead of a right hand side view. So that's front, top and left and you're you're expected to complete uh, the asymmetric sketch. Uh, easiest technique I would follow is uh, is trying to sort of replicate the front view. Let's just say if that's the front view, I'll try and replicate that on on the front face. So if that's the base those mini boxes obviously that that checks out we have this feature here which is already sitting behind so we don't need to worry about that so we are down to this feature now this this uh, sloping slanting face so I'm gonna draw from this edge sorry this uh, that corner to this corner a continuous thick line and that kind of marks uh, this face here so I'll let you guys deal with that I'll I'll make an announcement in that effect um, where to find uh, the appropriate material and hopefully I will see you guys during the lesson if you have any problem then please drop in during the lesson um, or you can send me an email um, the email address is on uh, is at the beginning of this video thank you